Now, welcome to another Weekend Ramble, where we're going to be talking about something different today. How mm -hmm. about some more Andor? What? <laughs> no, but seriously, today we're going to kind of talk about how family is driving the key players in Andor. It's all about family, as Carrie Fisher said about Star Wars. This is really a credit to Tony Gilroy, I think, because he really is showing us the character motivations and drives. I mean, aside from Deidre, who kind of just wants to prove herself, and Luthen, who we don't know why he's in the fight yet, all the other characters seem very motivated, if not primarily motivated, by family. I like how that's so real world, because a lot of people act because of well, yeah. most, family. A lot, yeah, almost most people, I would say, are To the driven benefit to of their family or for their family. or In spite of or... Yes. A lot, it can be a lot of different things. But family, obviously, for a lot of people, is mm -hmm. a great influence on your life, for better or worse. Yeah, it shows the realism, like I said, because he doesn't just use family in the positive light, also in the negative light. All the characters aren't just pure idealists like Nemec. Their motivations are just so clearly felt. Yeah, that's what I think the big success of the show has been. Like, you can relate to these characters. Even the bad ones. You're mm -hmm. like, you know, like someone like, I, I don't want to say he was even a bad one, but Cyril, for example. I think a lot of people relate to Cyril. You know, a lot of people have you know, an overbearing mother or a father, and they really have this desire to prove themselves because, you know, maybe their parents put them down. Or Well, if we look at the relationship in a whole, it's, it's a toxic relationship built on judgment and resentment. <laughs> well, that's a perfect way to put it. Yeah, you can tell she does still. She loves him. She loves him. him. Yeah, absolutely. But that's she the also weird part about wants it. to fix him, like he's something that's not working right. Yeah, it's that the parent who can't let go, who feels like they have a child that can't take care of themselves. Which mm -hmm. I think Cyril, if he, you know, he if he's allowed to spread his wings and leave the nest, which he did at a point, he'd be fine, right? Well, and he kind of showed the whole thing in the in the last episode when he fought back for himself. He stood up for himself. Yeah, which, which is, is hard for him to do because he's used to mm -hmm. authority figures like his mother always telling him what he can and cannot do or what. I mean, even though he does give back to his mother as well, he's not just totally taking everything. You can tell he's gotten tired of it. Well, just even that conversation when he came home, he's talking to her and, you know, he was proud of his old job. He was proud of the work he was doing. He was proud of the position he held. And he questions why didn't she never come to visit him? She had a He had a room that because she could that have wasn't the route he chose a route that she didn't approve of. I know, but look at it, the fact that he wanted her to approve of what he did yeah. on his own. Well, of course he does. It's his mother, right? I mean, even His mother almost seemed happy that he failed. Even if you have a strained relationship with a parent, usually there's still something somewhere mm -hmm. deep down where you love them and want their approval. I mean, that's what children basically want, especially when they're younger, they want their parents' approval. Then yeah. you go through a phase where it's the last thing you care about, but I think it comes back around eventually. And she almost seemed happy that he failed because that wasn't the route she wanted for him. Yeah. Not well, because exactly. she wanted him to fail, per se, but because she wanted him on a route that she chose. Exactly. She she was happy to have him back and to guide him again, that Uncle mm -hmm. Harlow can now get you a proper job. Right, something respectable. And, yeah. Oh, look, you tailored your collar. That tells me you're insecure. I mean, <laughs> he's just a tailored collar. Maybe you should collar. just be a tailor. Maybe that is the, <laughs> the answer to all of Cyril's problems. I don't think she'd approve. <laughs> Maybe not. All right, let's move on to Cassian and Marva. That is a very interesting one, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Well, we don't know much about the history of it yet. Well, you can tell, obviously, I mean, Marva loves her son. Very she much. She wants what is best for him. You can see also that she's disappointed in him. Yeah, from what she knows of what her son's been up to lately, it's just getting into trouble, getting into debts. You know, he's not doing anything with his life, as far as no. she knows. And when I say they, the history, we of course, we've seen the meeting, but we don't know... And we know there was something with Clem getting killed in the square. So we do have some history, but we don't know a lot of the story yet, I think. And I don't know that we're going to get a ton of it, but... What's really very interesting is it's almost a mirror to the relationship of Cyril and his mom. She wants, she still wants to guide him in the right directions, but at the same time she knows she can't force him to do what she sees as right. And she lets him make his own mistakes, lets him go his own That's way. That's the hardest thing to do as a parent, still being right? there for him. You have to, you have to let your kids fail. So that they can learn on their own sometimes. You mm -hmm. can't always, you know, the helicopter parent, <laughs> whatever we call them, where they want to protect their child from absolutely everything that might go wrong. I mean, family, That's the last thing you should really do with your child. But Family is even, like, her reason for joining the rebellion. She wants closure for the unjust death of her husband. Yeah. 
She she wants she cited it entirely that she couldn't walk through that square because of until what her son did and she doesn't know it's her son which is so she would be proud of him but she wouldn't be proud of why he did it exactly that's right. why he can't that's why tell he her can't tell her yeah he would otherwise be like you know who pulled off that job it was me but I just took me. the credits and ran mm-hmm. I mean it's it but but on the other side it's interesting because we we want to see that he's selfish over and over in the beginning they kept showing us how selfish he is he's gonna do this he's selfish he wants it all for himself but. What is the first thing he does when he gets that money? He goes what? home to his mother. Yeah. He because, wants to save her. Yeah. Wants her to get he her out of there. Take her off to a better life. And we do know he's looking for his sister as well. Mm-hmm. Which is and an she element. Said to not do that anymore. It's dangerous for him. Which, yeah, makes you ask does she know that his sister is dead or does she just highly suspect it? Is Cassian's sister out there somewhere? Who knows? I mean, that's one of the a strong motivations for him as well. We may see some more of that. We may not. He wanted to take his mom off to a better life. When she refused, he also knew he can't stay there because he's putting her at risk. Yeah, that was the, I can't she was put stay at risk and the you, first time. Yeah, yeah, you can't stay and I can't go, kind of the line right. that Marva used, yeah. So he leaves. He leaves partially to protect her because he knows he's, he cannot yeah. stay because she'll be at risk. He doesn't seem to care so much about the risk for himself. I mean, he seems to be good at weaseling his way around things, he thinks. He yeah. thinks. <laughs> he thinks he's pretty... I mean, he but is he good at it, he doesn't want to put his honest. mother at risk. No. I mean, he even asks, you know, them to take care of her while he's gone. Like, you know, keep an eye on her. And they do, which was nice to see. And then just like a sulking, rebellious child, was the first thing he does? He goes off and he's wasting money. And he's not happy. Showing that he can't even buy happiness with it, maybe knowing his mom that he left behind. Yeah, he goes to some kind I mean, of resort he doesn't, planet. He's not smiling at all. No, he's not. I mean, he's, he's looking at his money, he's hiding it, he's walking to the store. He's not happy. No, that's not... Money didn't get him what he wanted, because I... he couldn't help his mother either. Yeah, most people want more substance out of... I mean, money is great in a lot of ways. You know, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to anti-money or anything mm-hmm. exactly here, but it doesn't solve all your problems, and it can't buy all kinds of happiness. Maybe sure. it would have been different if his mom would have gone with him, but I think, I think maybe there's, yeah. a, there's a guilt that he had to leave her behind. I mean, what is you know what is the point of having you know wealth if you can't help people with it and mm-hmm. I, mean, I know there's a lot of people oh you can do a lot of other things with it but i mean you know that's kind of the thing like what's the point of being rich if you can't help the people you care about the most with it it's kind of you know which one would you actually rather have when you really stop and think about it i mean we finally got some motivation for val spoiled little rich girl running from her family yeah that's what cinta stabs that's... her with that little one right there right because she's like you're cold cinta <laughs> yeah well we do see her in that previous episode but you know the the coruscant accent and everything she seems like she knows she fits in there she fits into the the high society quite well yeah mm-hmm. and I've, i mean i've kind of had the theory that she could be luthan's daughter i don't know because if you look there, on... There's a little hint of that. There's there. a possibility. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I It's one of my pet theories, I guess. Up there <laughs> with my, you know, Cyril and Deidre getting together. Pet theory. I don't know. Mm, you really do want to make that happen. I don't know why. You know, maybe I think they'd make each other happy. And then they could leave the Empire and put Deidre it all behind them. is not a thing. <laughs> it should be. No. Well, it should be. <laughs> Cinta... Wants revenge, totally That's motivated a, yeah, by the revenge of her, of her family. Yeah, and that is, as yeah, she says in the episode, that she is... She even kills the, another family to try to avenge her family. Probably. She can't fill the void. Probably. We can't... We can't, it doesn't. It's never going to be confirmed at this at this stage. I think we can safely say we won't ever know. I think confirmed by calling her cold. They said the extermination of... Yes. Uh, 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 uh. Well, yeah, well, they're, they're obviously talking up the, the empire's talking up what happened on ohani making the rebellion seem like monsters who just went in there and you know blew everything up that's what we get from parents says you know they blew it all up and then in the prison you know they talk about there's some kind of slaughter or massacre at a garrison so the empire's lying but 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 there is some truth to it the fact that they still aren't seeming to hunt for these people with photos of them tells you something yeah because that family could don't... id sent a 100 percent. she stood in front of them how long yeah just stood there I, while they I could study she, her features. Yes. I mean, I, I, like, all I'm saying is the show doesn't 100% confirm it. We can definitely infer, we can assume she probably did it. And right. she did it because of her family. It's kind of, you know, she is all into, mm-hmm. as she says to Val, you know, the, uh, the struggle will always come first. That right. is now the most important because they took my family from me. And she wants revenge. Yeah. She's not in it for the righteous cause. She's in it for revenge. Yeah. I think the Val thing is also interesting. I think that, again, the, the Luthan... How do these two meet? Are they in the same kind of high society club? If you social circles, thank you. 
Is that where they kind of know each other from? Does Luthan know what happened to her parents? Did, did she help her run away? And now she's using Vel. And I mean, there's a, there's a lot of questions there with with Vel. I think, and I mean, that's what I love about the show. There's a lot of questions, and it's not mystery box questions, right? It's not like, oh, I wonder how no. they found this lightsaber. <laughs> it's you know, it's what's just, the deal with these characters? Well, because, because they, we've got so many motivations behind yes. and so many tidbits that you kind of just expect that we're gonna learn more. Yes. Now. That is why I always find it strange when people say this show is boring. I'm like, how? I, I don't... The I, intrigue I, is real. <laughs> yeah, the intrigue is real. I mean, I, we could probably talk about this show for hours and hours on end, and I, I don't I don't get it. Like, if you don't like... I'm not criticizing, but hey, I don't get the boring comments. And then the most complicated family relationship, Mon. The, <laughs> the Mothmas? The Mothmas. Oh, boy. That, now you just came up with the title of a whole new, new show there, The Mothmas. I mean... Every time I feel like we get new information with Mon's family, things just start clicking into place. She said she was married when they were like 14. 15, but yeah. More mature than 14, clearly. Clearly. I mean, more ready for marriage at that, Could you know. this possibly have been an arranged marriage? I think They're to a they were, degree. You know, they were kids. To a degree, right? I mean... They didn't even know the people they were going to become at that age. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure... I mean, we've all been that age Chandrilin. or most... I don't know, Chandrilin... Yeah, but I mean, every, when you're 14 and 15 and you fall in love for the first time, yeah, you think, I'm going to marry this person, sure, but most of us don't do that. But clearly, at least she is from an affluent family. Yes, I think they both I are. I think they both are. That's why I think this was more of an arranged type marriage. Something along those lines, Which yeah. could explain the strain. The family is, is splintering, it's breaking, and Mon hasn't seen this yet. She's almost so consumed by her rebellion activities and her Senate life that I don't think she really I sees think... how far... The splintering has gone. I, you could be right. I think she, she definitely sees it, especially I think with the daughter. I mean, she, I don't think she cares so much with Perrin. I think she's gotten to the point where, as you say, it's probably an arranged marriage. Either way, when you get married at fifteen, as I was saying before, you, you think you found the love of your life, and a lot of the times you just, you know, hormones and you're excited, and it, it ends in a couple weeks. <laughs> but and so, you know, what happens when that does become the marriage that lasts for 10, 20 years? Do you even have those? any of those feelings anymore, assuming you mm -hmm. had them in the first place? You know, do you regret who you could have maybe, you know, a, a, someone like a Tay, perhaps, that you could have <laughs> ended up with? Right. And her, you can tell that her husband doesn't like Tay. No, well, why should he? He's, you know, he views him as a, you know, that's what I think is going on. I don't think, like, like the daughter or, or parent are thinking, oh, mom's with the rebellion. Or, no, you know, of course, they're not thinking that. No, they're thinking, Tay is, this they is all an excuse. that everyone else does, that she's just standing up for her rights and squawking yeah. in the Senate. <laughs> Good way to put it, yeah. Yeah, they, well, I'm sure remember, Perrin... Tay is a childhood friend. Even earlier This than... could have been somebody she actually did love, but had yes. to get married in the arranged marriage, set up possibly by her family. So he could have always been the love rival. It's a, it's, you're probably dead so on. So having Tay pop up back into their life, immediately he immediately went on edge. Yeah. It wasn't the, like he was like, oh, she's talking to him? I'm suspicious now. No, he immediately was on edge. Immediately like, um, yeah, daughter, go and ask your mom if you can leave the party. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. totally won't give you permission, a.k.a. go interrupt them. Yeah. No. And then he goes and interrupts. And then... No, it's totally, I feel like that this was a love rival when they were kids. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And the question then becomes, what happens when, because we know it's going to happen. Like, either parent or the daughter or both are somehow going to stumble upon something they shouldn't. I think the daughter might something. stumble upon it, and this might actually heal the rift between them, because she sees her mom as a do-nothing senator. True. This could actually bring them closer, to go, you know what, my, my mom is actually, she she cares about the people... Not just, like, I'm going to talk for them in the Senate, but I'm going to actually do something Good. against the injustices that I see. This could actually endear them together, but only if she sees her mom doing that before she reports her mom to her dad for cheating or something <laughs> yeah. crazy. I mean, the, the relationship is just so multifaceted and interesting. It feels so real. Yeah. This is a real relationship in Star Wars. Yes. This isn't, I'm on Mothma, and there's my husband smiling behind me, supporting me, and just being a great guy all around. No, this is this is a real relationship I, that has turbulence in it. I feel that's exactly how other shows, you know, that don't go into this level of that don't go into this level of depth would have handled Perrin and the daughter. They would have just been, mm -hmm. you know, every relationship would have been, them. yeah, like surface level. Like, of course, we They're are happily, happily married. Yeah, 
happy and everything's perfect in our lives. Yeah. And but I'm there's fighting, my daughter, and she's I, great and supports me as well. And well, that's what's great with Mon Mothma. It's like, this is what I wish, you know, to kind of get into a touchy subject. Like, these female characters are fantastic in this show. Like, they they feel real. Like, Mon Mothma feels, she's not like... You know, like I said, she doesn't have the perfect family, and she's not the perfect hero, and she's got her own marital problem. You know, she's got real life problems, and yet she's still trying to do what she, you know, what she's is right and what is best. With and strength and poise. Yeah. It's like you. I honestly think you need to watch this show if you if you're going to write a good female character in a sci-fi show like this. If you want to make good female Star Wars characters, yeah. watch this. Well, and it, it cuts you deep to see that the relationship with her daughter isn't well, and that she doesn't even understand all the times that her relationship with her daughter isn't good. I mean, she's like, hey, get your coat. We're going out. We're doing this thing. We planned it. And she's yeah. like, yeah, I don't want to go. What do you and mean? And she's like yeah. surprised. And yeah. you can tell she's hurt. But her daughter's like, stop pretending you're hurt. Yeah. We don't care. I'm just a side piece for you here. Oh. A show piece. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. You know okay. what I yeah, mean. I, I, well, I hope I know what she And mean. she's like, doesn't. No, that's not what my mom's thinking at all. But she's so hurt that her daughter sees her this way. Like, it caught her off guard. And I want her to try and mend their relationship. We don't know what happens to Perrin and... Lita. Lita. We do know that, you know, according to other canon, Mon Mothma doesn't speak of a, of a husband or daughter. So that's curious. Well, why would she tell the other rebellion sure. well, cells no, I'm not that saying she's that. got family that... I don't yeah, know. I'm not saying she would stand up at, you know, <laughs> Return of the Jedi and like, you know... Many Bothans died, but my daughter got an A in her new <laughs> yeah, economics class. Yes, exactly. I'm not or saying that, whatever, yes. Whatever, social history or whatever they're studying. Yes. But, yeah, I mean, there are, there are times you think, well, there could have she could have been mentioned in, you know, books or stuff, but doesn't, so... Again, what do the books really mean, too? So, who knows? I, I, I do find yes, it interesting. We have no idea if they're still a part of her life. Maybe she sent them into hiding to protect them, and she just doesn't talk about them because she, it hurts her. Yeah. Or they're dead. Yes. Yeah, which is what I know you were skating around saying. Yes. I mean, that would be... Skating around it like, did Cinta kill the family? Who knows? Is, who knows? Is Mon Moth's family alive? Who knows? So many questions. Did Cinta get to Mon Mon's family? Who knows? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Interesting. Season two. Dark turn right there. Who knows? I mean, if she and Luthen have any sort of falling out, Luthen will come for her, too. Luthen will come for her. Mm-hmm. Hey, even Saw Gerrera, motivated by family, if you go back to the Clone Wars. Absolutely. His Loss sister. Lost of his sister, yeah. Stella. Yeah. So it's all, it's all about family. I mean, it really... It, it is. Like I said, aside from the... We don't know Luthen's history yet. And Deidre's just in this to prove herself. Yeah. Yeah, Luthen is the, the biggest mystery right now. Luthen is the mystery. Because it seems like there's probably a... Fa- I mean, there's... He, I feel like there's a family connection we don't know. Somewhere. Because he seems like he comes from probably wealth. You know, I don't... Or he amassed it. Who knows? I mean, he does have a pretty nice shop. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Well, only time will tell. And I'm sure they will tell Luthen's story. Yes. And if they don't, damn you. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, that is all we got for you this time. So take to the comments below and tell us what you think about any and all of this, about the family motivations of these characters. Are you loving the characters because of this depth and getting to know them and getting to know the families? And, I mean, is this what Star Wars should be? You know, getting down into the nitty-gritty? Or should it just be that surface-level fun stuff? Or, you know what, can we have both? Whatever the case may be, leave your comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.